Welcome back to another lesson, everybody. Now, we have covered many principles so far. We've looked at carb counting, we've looked at where the carbohydrates are, we've put it all together. But the final piece of the jigsaw is how to know whether or not your ratios are correct. Now, we've touched upon this in the sense that you can see what your glucose levels do after the meal to see then whether or not your ratios are working for you. Obviously, if you get a big spike after a meal consistently, it shows the ratios aren't working for you or your carb calculations are out. But of course, the other thing that we, we, we need to think about and we can delve a little deeper is actually how do we know those individual ratios are working? Because sometimes you can give a certain dose of insulin and it works out, but it doesn't work out for the reason that you thought. Sometimes you think you've calculated your carbs correctly, but you haven't. You've added in a correction factor, which just so happens to be enough to also cover the carbohydrate that you've miscalculated. So your glucose levels ends up back to where you think they should be, but actually it's, been, it's happened in a bit of a mismatch way. So you've borrowed some correction insulin to cover the carbs or vice versa. Um, you've borrowed some carb insulin to actually add a correction because you've miscalculated the carbohydrates. So although the end point's the same and you've ended up where you wanted to be, you don't actually know whether or not your true ratios for your carbs and your correction are correct because you've given it together. So what we need to do then is actually separate out at different time points to check this. So you're only testing one thing at a time. So let's give an example here. So you, you've tested your glucose and your 18 millimoles per liter. You're gonna have 50 grams of carbohydrate at your meal. You're on a ratio of one unit for 10 grams and your correction is one unit drops you three. So in order to get your glucose back into target, which is somewhere between five and 10, so let's say we're gonna take it down by nine. So we're gonna go down to nine. Um, in fact, let's draw this out, shall we? Where's my pen? Here it is. So we're gonna correct back to nine because the mass works quite nicely on a one unit drops three. So in order to do that, we need to take three units because one unit drops three. Therefore, if we take three units, it drops us nine. So that gets us back to nine, okay? We've also got a ratio of one unit to 10. So 50 grams, that is five units to cover that. Okay. And this takes three units. So our total insulin dose is eight units. Like I say, we are now giving two insulin doses together. So we can't really test which ratio is actually correct. So the first thing we need to do to test the carbohydrate ratio is try and find a time point in your control when you're gonna have a meal, when you don't need a correction. Because if you can do that, so let's say you're between five and 10 and you've got a meal planned, then the only thing you need to give insulin for is your carbohydrates. And therefore we get a clean look at how well that ratio is working. Now, obviously, and I keep stressing this, you need to make sure that you've calculated the carbohydrates correctly. Because if you haven't, then we can never truly test this. So be quite um, meticulous with this at the beginning and make sure that those carbs are correct. And then you can see how it works out because we only got one variable to judge it by. Try not to exercise when you're doing this. Try not to be too stressed out. Whenever you're, you're doing a test, we're just trying to control down to as many, to as uh, few variables as possible. So the only variable we really wanna look at is those carbohydrate um, insulin units to see how that works out. And the same can then be applied for a correction dose. So you might think that your correction dose is one unit drops you three based on your body weight or based on your total daily dose or whatever method you're using to calculate it. But obviously if you're adding in carbohydrate insulin with it, you can never really know. So in an ideal world, you'll do a carb free meal or even fast for a meal, just skip a meal, but at a time point when you still need a correction. So you can still take that correction even though you're not eating um, to reduce high glucose levels down to normal glucose levels or in target glucose levels. So in this example, let's say you weren't eating any carbohydrates so you're gonna fast for the meal. So we don't have any carbohydrate insulin going in. And so we're gonna take three units to drop us from 18 to nine. But what if those three units only dropped you six? So you've actually only gone down to 12 millimoles. So when we look at the maths, that's only dropped you six. So actually what we can see is that ratio is actually not one to three, but in this instance, it's only dropped you um, one to two. So what does that show us? It shows us then if you gave eight units at this mill and it still got you back into target, you've probably actually overestimated the carbohydrates because in order to get back to nine, you've probably added extra insulin on the correction side of things um, as opposed to the carbs because we separated out. So hopefully that makes sense.
So actually that ratio looks more like one to two. Now we wanna repeat this to just make sure that that is the case because diabetes is always a bit of a gray area as I'm sure you know. So never just act off one result. You always wanna repeat it and just double check. But if you're consistently getting um, results where you're not eating any food or you're having a carb-free meal uh, and then you're adding a correction and it's only dropping you one to two, like in this example, then it shows that actually your ratio is one to two. But if you've previously been taking insulin on the assumption you're working off a one to three, it shows us your carb estimates are out because otherwise, if you had the carbs right, then you'd still only get that one drops you two result. So that's the way to check it. So we really need to just do one at a time and then once you're satisfied that both ratios are correct in practice on the ground, so you know, actually applying it in real life rather than just theoretically, that's when we can put it back together and start taking it at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and your evening meal, uh, and in the evening if you want to. And that's when you'll start to get the truest, best control that you can get. So we'll leave it there, guys. See you at the next lesson.